electrician program number seven. The objectives for this chapter, chapter seven, which is device wiring, are to discuss the significance of listing or labeling electrical devices and materials, properly prepare conductors for connection, make safe conductor splices, demonstrate the proper method for attaching conductors to devices and fixtures, ground a receptacle, split wire a receptacle, mount fixtures. Some of the technical terms discussed in this chapter are break off fin, fixture, grounding type complex receptacle, pigtail, receptacle, slicing, split wired receptacle, and wire connector. In the finishing stages of a wiring project, the electrician makes the final connection between conductors, receptacles, fixtures, motors, and other devices. The NEC, specifically Article 110, specifies requirements for the installation of such materials and equipment. Wiring methods and materials. Details on various wiring methods and materials are presented in the articles of Chapter 3 of the NEC. These articles describe, define, limit, and specify the methods and materials of wiring used in the electrical industry today. Articles 110 and 300. Most code violations are items covered in Article 110 and Article 300. If you become knowledgeable of these areas in the NEC, your installations will be less likely to suffer the time consuming, embarrassing, and costly red flagging during an inspection. Mechanical considerations. Proper mechanical installation of electrical equipment is important. Electrical equipment must be securely mounted. Further, all materials and equipment must appear orderly. Conductors and cables must be careful, carefully routed and supported to avoid any damage. Conductors must be properly secured to their termination points, avoid excessive stress or strains on cables and conductors. Electrical connections. When electrical wires are terminated or spliced, a suitable connection must be made this requires a clean and secure physical contact between conductors or conductors and device terminals. All electrical connections must be made inside an electrical box or enclosure. Connections shall not be made between unlike metals unless the electrical device are the, unless the electrical devices are suitable for this purpose and are identified as suitable. Splices and connections must be covered with insulation equal to the insulation on, on the wires. Proper tools must be used so as not to damage cabling or conductors. Working clearances. To ensure accessibility and maintain service or operate electrical equipment, the NEC insists the work clearances shall not be less than 30 inches wide in front of the equipment. Further, these clearances must not be cluttered with any items, including crates or boxes, or in any way used for storage. Storing items in front of electrical equipment would prevent rapid access in the case of an emergency. See figure 7-1. Identification for safety. Major electrical equipment components and the disconnected means of such devices should be clearly identified. Information on voltage, amperage, and equipment being controlled should be permanently marked on the disconnect means. Panel board circuit disk directories must be correctly labeled and located at the panel board. The intent of this rule is safety. Should a circuit or device need to be de-energized, the marking would allow for rapid action. A figure 7-2. Pro tip labels for circuit identification. Always carry a permanent marker and a number of self-adhesive labels on your tool pouch. Use these labels to clearly identify each circuit at the panel. The permanent marker may be used to mark directly on the panel's surface or on a label. Preparation of conductors. 
Wires conduct electrical energy. They carry this energy from place to place. In this process, they must connect to each other and to terminate at various electrical devices. In order for them to move electrons from one place to another, conductors are insulated to eliminate the incorrect or dangerous flow of electricity. However, where connections are made, insulation must be removed for proper contact. Stripping wire. All connections involve stripping some of the insulation from the wire. This exposes the conductor for a good electrical connection. There are many methods for removing the insulation, but the common concern is not to damage either the conductor or the remaining insulation. Using a stripping knife, you can remove the insulation from a single wire by carefully stripping it away with a sharp pocket knife or electrician's knife designed for this purpose. Do this carefully so that the blade does not nick or cut away any of the conductor. Make sloping cuts toward the wire end and away from your body and hands as shown in figure 7-3. Do not make a circling cut at a right angle to the insulation. It is almost impossible to control the depth of, this, of the cut in this way. A nick conductor will break easily if bent at the point of damage. Also, a nick or groove will reduce the current carrying ability of the conductor. After you have cut away the insulation all around the wire using a whittling or cuts, twist the short piece of insulation. As a general rule, a little less than an inch of the conductor should be bared. This allows enough bare wire to make a proper connection. Some electrical devices have gauges for determining how much insulation to remove. See figure 7-4. Using wire strippers. The preferred way to remove insulation is with one of the wire strippers shown in figure 7-5. All of the strippers have circular notches that are sized to cut the insulation without damaging the conductor. Simple wire strippers cut the insulation, but you have to slide the tool to remove the insulation. Automatic wire strippers will cut and separate the insulation with one complete squeeze of the handles. Attaching conductors to device terminals. When solid conductors are connected to screw type terminals, the ends must be formed in a loop for a proper connection. Use a needle nose pliers or similar tool to form a curved hook on the conductor as shown in figure 7-6. This must be connected clockwise onto the terminal. When the screw is tightened, the open end of the loop will be pulled inward, making the connection more secure if the screw turns against the open end of the formed loop the clockwise, the loop will, end, will tend to open. This results in a poor connection that may be unsafe. Electrical devices are made to connect with wires in many ways. A terminal screw is tightened against a loop at the end of the wire. A screw is tightened against a straight section of the end of the wire. A straight section at the end of the wire is secured by spring tension only. Several of these devices are illustrated in figure 7-8. Splicing conductors. Splicing is the process of connecting one wire to one or more wires. When done properly, the splice will last for years without any maintenance. An improper sloppy splice may disconnect as soon as you let go of the wires or worse yet, many come apart when the wires are energized. This can cause a fire, injury or death. <clears throat> the NAC requires that all bare wire must be ta taped with insulation at least equivalent to the thickness of that of the conductor's original coverings. See NEC section 110.14b.
In addition, most connectors are marked CU for copper wire or AL for aluminum wire or CU slash AL for either. This coating must be followed strictly for safety purposes. Wire connectors. Wire connector. A wire connector is a device that joins wires together by forcing them into the connector's cone shaped cavity where a metal coil cuts threads into the wires. See figure 7 S9. These are also called wire nuts. The wires should not be twisted before adding the connector unless the manufacturer's instructions specify doing so. Some installation instructions state that the connector must be tightened enough to cause two twists in the wire. This is a good indicator that the connector is sufficiently tightened. After the wire connector is applied, tug on each wire to verify a complete termination. To achieve a secure connection using, a wire, connectors, using wire connectors or wire nuts, you may want to use one of the special tools that are designed to increase the leverage on the connector. There are wrenches, drill operated sockets, and screwdrivers with a socket in the handle that fit over the wire connectors. See figure 7 10. Other methods of joining wire. Besides previously discussed methods of joining wire, joints can be secured with other metals, metal connectors such as bolt-on lugs, split bolt connectors, compression connectors, and compression logs. See figure 7-11. These types are used to join heavy wires such as 6AWG, or larger. The compression terminations are made with special crimping tool with a special crimping tool. When using any of these items, always wrap all exposed metal with rubber or plastic tape to a thickness equal to the conductor's insulation. Wiring switches, receptacles and fixtures. It is important for you to become familiar with the wiring principles of switches, receptacles and lamps. The section explains the various devices and how they are to be wired based on the rules of the National Electric Code. Switch wiring. Common switches are generally the same in the size and appearance. Their function, of course, is to control the flow of electricity to one or more electrical devices. These devices include receptacles, fixtures, lamps, and heaters. The most common switches are single pole, three way, and four way. See figure. 7-12. A single pole switch has two terminals and controls a switch, a circuit from one position. When the single pole switch is in the on position, the two terminals are electrically connected. A three-way switch has three terminals and controls a circuit from two positions. One of the terminals is a color that is different from the other two. This is called the common terminal. The other two terminals are called travelers. A four-way switch has four terminals and controls a circuit from three or more positions. All of the terminals in a four-way switch are called travelers. Any circuit that is controlled from three or more positions uses a combination of three and four-way switches. The switch function, regardless of type, is to interrupt the hot, ungrounded wire only. A switch must never be placed on the grounded neutral or white wire or the grounding, or the grounding green wire. We will explore all types of circuits and how to connect them in section 3 of planning. Receptacle wiring. A receptacle is a device that is used to transfer electrical energy from conductors to plug equipped electrical equipment such as lamps, toasters, radios, television sets, blenders, and vacuum cleaners. See figure 7 13. 
These devices are connected with a flexible device cord or a flexible service cord that has two or three pronged plug on the end. The makeup of a receptacle and outlet receptacles current carrying grounding parts are arranged on a yoke or strap that is to be connected to a box with two screws. The parts the parts that conduct current to the appliance cord are enclosed inside, of the, inside the non conducting material. Contacts are made of tough alloys that hold their shape and remain springy even after years of service. See figure 7 14. When pushed into the slots, the plug blades push the metal contacts apart. Tension of the metal maintains good electrical connections against the blades. This current may easily flow through the contacts into the plug. Duplex receptacle. A duplex receptacle accepts two appliance or lamp cord plugs. The grounding type duplex receptacle has five terminals. The two silver colored screws are for the grounded neutral wires and the two brass colored screws are for the ungrounded wires. The fifth terminal is a green hex head a green hex head screw for connecting the bare or insulated green grounding wire. This terminal is electrically connected to the U-shaped grounding slot on the front of the receptacle. Receptacles with push-in terminals may or may not have screws. There is a breakoff fin between the two neutral terminals and another between the two hot terminals. The breakoff fin is a removable tab that separates the two outlets on a, dupli on a duplex receptacle. You will learn more about this in the section covering split circuit wiring. Receptacles intended for 120 volt appliances and other electrical devices have two parallel slots plus the U-shaped ground up openings. Other receptacle outlets have different configurations that are designed to accept only locking plugs or special plugs to figure 7-15. Non-grounding receptacle. The non-grounding receptacle shown in figure 7-13 is installed in older houses that do not have any grounding. You must not install a standard grounding receptacle as a replacement for a non-grounding receptacle unless you are going to upgrade the wiring system to include a grounding path. You should not install a non-grounding receptacle in a house that is grounded. These receptacles do not accept three-pronged plugs, which may limit the receptacle's use to lamps and radios. Section 406.3 D3 describes the accepted methods of replacing a non-grounding type receptacle. Grounding the receptacle. Methods of grounding the receptacles vary. The method selected depends on the type of wiring system and boxes used. In a metal conduit system, the conduit and metal boxes provide the proper equipment ground all the way back to the service entrance panel. In this case, there is no need for a grounding conductor. When the receptacle is attached to the box, grounding contact is made through the receptacle yoke and screws to the box. In addition, local codes may require a bonding jumper to be installed between the receptacle grounding screw and the metal box. Other wiring systems requiring a ground include armored cable or BX, flexible metal conduit or greenfield, non-metallic cable, and rigid plastic conduit. There must be continuity from the grounding screw of the receptacle to the ground wire and to the metal box if present. Attaching current carrying conductors. The wiring of receptacles is fairly, fairly simple. 
connect the white neutral wire to the side of the device that has the silver or light colored screws. The black or hot wire is then connected to the other side. This side will have a brass or dark colored screw. Figure 7-16. When more than one receptacle is to be added onto the circuit from the first one, they can be connected as shown in figure 7-17. It is best to make the connections through a pigtail arrangement. A pigtail is a short piece of wire that connects multiple wires to a single termination. A pigtail allows the receptacle to be removed without affecting others in the circuit. Split wire receptacles. A split wire receptacle is one in which one of the outlets is a duplex receptacle. A split wire receptacle is one in which one of the outlets in a duplex receptacle is controlled by a switch while the other is always energized. One neutral wire can still serve both outlets. However, two hot wires are required. One will go on a switch, the other to the source of current. The break off fin between the hot side dark colored terminals must be removed. See figure 7 18. Figure 7-18 shows a breakoff fin as well as a simple schematic of a split wired receptacle. Receptacles. Receptacle outlets are manufactured in various configurations. A few of the more common ones are shown in figure 7-19. Other types of locking plug receptacle configurations are shown in appendix C at the end of this book. Fixtures. A fixture is a permanently mounted lamp, usually attached to a ceiling or wall. Fixtures are wired in the same way as outlets. The neutral or white wire of the source is connected to the white or otherwise neutral indicated wire of the fixture. A black wire from the source is connected to the other terminal of the fixture. See figure 7-20, which shows a wiring arrangement, a wiring arrangement for a simple pull chain fixture. This fixture is at the end of a run. A ground wire or bare or green insulated wire should not be connected between the box and the grounding screw on the fixture. See figure 7-21, which shows the same pull chain fixture further along a circuit run. Note the symbols and schematics of these hookups. Figure 7-22 shows a fixture controlled by a switch rather than a pull chain. If metal conduit is used, the green grounding conductor is not necessary since the conduit itself becomes the grounding means. Mounting fixtures. It is important to understand how fixtures are safely and securely attached to a wall or ceiling box. Fixtures may be mounted on boxes in a variety of ways depending on the following type of fixture, location of fixture, wall or ceiling composition, weight of the fixture. The types of fixtures may range from surface mount to recessed, chain supported or not, and a small sized to enormous candeliers. Candeliers. Regardless of the type, the fixture must be made must be mounted securely to the outlet box where the fixture is to be mounted will affect the manner of supporting it. Usually wall mounted fixtures are lightweight and can be directly mounted to the box without special mounting devices. Heavier fixture 
Heavier fixtures require substantial box supports and braces, often referred to as box hangers. These attach to joists above the finished ceiling. If you are mounting a fixture or plaster and lath, wallboard, sheet rock, or any other of the various types of wall finishing, special considerations must be given to the best procedure to follow. Care must be taken not to damage the fixture or finished surface. The illustrations in figure 7-23 will serve as a guideline for methods and devices used to mount fixtures. Often special fittings are supplied with the fixture. And finally, some review questions for the chapter. First one is true or false. Chapter 3 of the NEC goes into considerable detail on methods and materials of wiring used in electrical industry. And that is a true statement. Why is storing items in front of an electrical woman against the rules of the NEC? Because an electrical panel and so, and so on. That is because it may prevent from accessing the panel in the case of an emergency to the energized, for, for example, a piece of equipment. Question three, why should grooving or nicking a wire be avoided during stripping of insulation? Because it may degrade the conducting qualities of the conductor and it may uh, weaken the conductor to the point where it could break off and cause uh, how functions the circuit. Question four, a splice of two conductors is usually secured with blank. Fill in the blank. And that is a wire connector, sometimes called a wire nut. Question five, when solid conductors are connected to screw type terminals, the ends must be formed in a blank for a proper connection. Fill in the blank. And that would be a question mark shape. Question six, the brass or dark colored screw in the duplex receptacle is for the blank conductor. That would be the hot or, or line conductor or current carrying conductor. Question seven, true or false, the white neutral conductor must never be interrupted by a switch and that is a true statement. Question eight, true or false, electrical connections, taps, or splices can be located outside of an electrical box or enclosure. That is false. They must always be protected and kept away from the reach or access, easy access, for safety reasons, obvious safety reasons. Question nine, connectors and connecting points are marked CU which means blank wire and AL, which means blank wire. Fill in the blank. First blank would be copper for CU and aluminum for AL. Question 10, draw a diagram of a circuit containing a split wired receptacle with one outlet controlled by a switch and the other continuously energized. And I have attempted to make this drawing in the screen in your on your screen go ahead and study follow that sketch and make your own a lot of times if you can understand something very well you're able to sketch it out so go ahead and give it a try question 11 explain the purpose of the green hex head screw on a grounded receptacle and that would, that would be a way to ground to earth the switch or the receptacle. Question 12, last question. What is What are the four considerations when deciding on a method to attach a fixture or to attach a fixture to a box? What are the four considerations when deciding only method to attach a fixture to a box. 
And uh, here are the considerations. Number one is the type of fixture. Number two is the location of the fixture. Number three is the wall or ceiling composition. And number four, the weights of the fixture. And the know the code portion of these questions. Number one, according to article 110.26A2, what is the number of minimum number of degrees? Or what is the minimum number of degrees that a hinged panel door must be able to swing? And if, if you find on the 2017 NEC, page 70-47, it would be 90 degrees. Question two, what is the maximum size of wire allowed for terminating to a wire binding screw according to Article 110.14 of the NEC? That is Article 110.14a. And according to the NEC 2017, page 70-45, that is a, uh, 10 AWG maximum size for the allowed wire for terminating to a one wire binding screw. According to the NEC, what is the definition of a device? And if you go to uh, section 100, article 100 of the NEC, which a few definitions, it is a unit or electrical system other than a conductor that carries or controls electric energy as its principal function. And that is the end of this chapter. Please review as needed and uh, especially study the diagrams and the articles uh, referred to here or cited here by, from the NEC. Thank you very much.